to watch it later. All right, letting a couple more people on. So today is Wednesday, April 8th. Um, we're doing our live cooking Zoom today, right? Um, make sure that you're marking yourself here in the chat box for your attendance, and I'll go through and count you all later, right? Because you get credit uh, for being here. If you can't be live, just remember that watch the video later, and then you'll answer the question that I post with it, okay? Um, today's recipe is in your Google Doc. Uh, that I shared with you guys for your assignments this week, which is Alton Brown's peanut butter cookies. Okay. Um, so for this recipe, um, you guys know I love Alton Brown, right? We show him in class all the time from Good Eats, um, also Cutthroat Kitchen shows. He's been doing a series on his social media um, since this whole shutdown thing has happened called uh, Pantry Rates. So he's been doing it on YouTube and his Facebook and things that um, uses stuff that you have on hand in home because obviously we don't want you guys running out to the grocery stores uh, or anything like that so i'm going to try and do rescue with you each week with stuff that you know i tend to have already in my house here um simple ingredients that you can pick up stuff that's actually available in the stores because uh, a lot of things have been getting cleared out but we'll try and keep it nice and simple few ingredients but also keep it low cost too right you don't want to be spending all kinds of extra money all right um we're gonna start off today with um, mixing up our cookie dough, right? So medium sized bowl, you see this is not super, super big. This recipe is um, easy to um, fit in a smaller bowl. If you guys, if all you have is something that's bigger, that's fine. Um, you wanna make sure that you have enough room to mix everything, okay? So I already measured out for you guys, the first ingredient is one cup of peanut butter, okay? See you there, all right? Um, I'm using Skippy, you know, Jif, Market Basket brand, whatever you have on hand. If you want some fancy gourmet peanut butter, um, I'm saving that for my English muffins. So instead, I'm using my son's cheap stuff for the cookies, okay? So one cup of peanut butter is going to go in the bowl first, right? So it's nice to have a good little rubber spatula or a knife, like a butter knife to do this with, okay? Um, to this, I'm gonna be adding our sugar. So we're gonna use two different types of sugar for this recipe. We're gonna be using regular granulated sugar, okay? So that's the same sugar that you have Dunkin' Donuts put in your coffee, all right? Not the powdery stuff, okay? So you want real good granulated sugar, right? So the domino stuff, just like we use in class, okay? Um, for this recipe here, it is going to be a half a cup of granulated sugar, right? And make sure, remember, always level. Okay, no overflowing, you don't want it under, you want a nice level measurement, okay? Let me just click a couple people in. All right, so I'm gonna put that in to there, okay? Um, and then we're gonna have some brown sugar as well. So my brown sugar at home, right, because the same thing that I do in school is we put it in that bucket up top and I have you guys wrap it in plastic first to keep it from drying out. So at home, I just throw into a Ziploc bag because brown sugar, if it gets too much air to it, will get really hard um, and won't be able to use it, okay? So um, for this, you wanna take, um, and make sure it's nice and soft. If it does get too hard for you though, right? What you can do is take a slice of bread and put that into your bag um, and seal it up for a day or so, or a slice of an apple, and that moisture will bring your brown sugar back, okay? All right, I'm just gonna have to keep adding, admitting people as we go here, but. I'll do that. I can so finally hear. Everybody's on mute, okay? Wait, you want us to be on mute? Yeah. All right. So we are going to be doing a quarter cup of light brown sugar. If all you've got is dark brown sugar, that's fine. Okay, that just has a little bit more molasses to it. What I'm doing is I'm just pressing this into the cup, so I want it packed, right? So pack down tight and put that into the bowl. So, so far we've got our peanut butter, we've got our granulated sugar, and now we have the um, brown sugar going into it. It's not letting me admit people at the moment here, hang on. All right. So I just got a good wooden spoon, something sturdy, right? Because it's gonna be a little bit thick and pasty. All right. And you just wanna get this nice and smooth. So I'm using a smooth peanut butter for this, um, you can use chunky style, okay? Uh, it really won't change anything much, but it'll just give you a little bit more texture to your cookies, okay? So we're gonna take and 
stir this up. Now I already have my oven on to 350, right? 350 degrees, preheated it, it's been on for a good 20 minutes or so already. You wanna make sure your oven's on for at least 10, 15 minutes um, to make sure that it's nice and hot, up to temperature, and it's leveled itself out, right? If you are putting in um, cookies into a cold oven and it's heating up, they're not gonna spread properly, so we don't want that to happen, okay? So you can see the mixture is nice and smooth, so peanut butter, granulated sugar, brown sugar, right? Our next ingredient is gonna be one egg, right, which I've got right here. So one, one large egg. A lot of people tend to crack them onto the bowl, right? So what you wanna do instead is crack it on the counter. When you crack it on the bowl, you're gonna get pieces of shell pushed inside, and that usually is what breaks the yolk too, okay? So crack it on the counter, drop our egg in, okay? So you guys will see, I got all my mise en place done already today, right? Just like we do for our recipes at school. So get all your stuff out, make sure you have everything. You don't wanna get halfway through a recipe and realize I don't have eggs, okay? So I'm gonna stir this up real good, nice and quick. Now, the one thing you're gonna notice about this is this recipe does not use any flour, okay? Um, which is good right now, because flour has been hard to find. People have been hoarding flour. Um, I guess their big goal is to plan to make bread. We'll see how many people actually do. Um, but it's slowly making a comeback on the shelf. So some of you might not be able to get flour, so that's why I wanted to do something that was a flourless cookie, okay? Our next thing that we're gonna be adding in is a teaspoon of baking soda, right? Now I keep mine in a Ziploc bag, especially the one that I use for cooking. At school, we use this in refrigerators to help absorb odors and things, right? So that's fine. That's why I don't want it to absorb odor, odor in the house though. So instead, seal it up in a bag, wrap it in plastic, okay? It will um, help keep it from tasting fun, okay? Especially when you put it into cookies. So one teaspoon, it's gonna be a level teaspoon. So just measure that into your box. And make sure you're using baking soda, not the baking powder that comes in the cans, okay? So once again, nice level measurements, okay? Both baking soda and baking powder contain um, sodium bicarbonate. This one here has one reaction only. Baking powder is two, which makes things pop in the oven. We don't want things to um, necessarily puff for this cookie because they're thin, flat, crisp cookies. Okay, so that's why we're using baking soda instead of baking powder. All right, I'm trying to get this to let me uh, let Percy in. All right. If you have a hard time getting in, just keep trying to come in. Okay, so baking soda, right? Then we're also going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I have this one here, which is just um, it's a baking vanilla, so it's a little bit artificial with a little bit of real vanilla. Uh, which helps keep the cost down. Vanilla can tend to be expensive, so you can use imitation vanilla, whatever you have in the house, that's fine. All right. so I'm gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla. All right, and our last ingredient is gonna be salt, right? So Alton loves to use kosher salt, and if you've seen his shows, um, you'll notice he's got a cute little salt dish, which I also have. Right, so this is my kosher salt that sits on my stove. So when I'm cooking, I like it because it has a coarser texture. So when I'm sprinkling things into uh, recipes, it's got a little bit more grit to it. This is the same one we have in the big red box on the counter at home, uh, at home, yeah, at school, right? So I use that at home too. This is just gonna be a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. If all you have is regular salt, just use an equal amount of regular salt, okay? Don't increase it, because Skylar was asking me about that earlier and you don't want your cookies to be too salt, okay? So. We just wanna mix this really well. And you guys see it's a nice, thick, tasty batter, okay? Give this a little bit more stir. Okay. This is something you definitely wanna try at home, right? Good, nice, fresh, homemade cookie. Always better than the store-bought ones anyways, right? Okay, so other tools that you need for this are obviously a cookie sheet, right? You've got the uh, oven on, but I got my cookie sheet here, and I do things big, right? One batch, right? Keeps it simple. So if you've got two small cookie sheets, that's fine. Um, I put parchment paper on this because I don't want to have to wash and scrub and scrape the pan later. Um, if you're using a regular cookie sheet without parchment, um, things you can, you know, obviously get in the roll and things. Don't use wax paper because that'll tend to burn. So parchment paper, um, cookie sheet that's non-stick or 
you can use a fancy silpat silicone mats if you happen to have one of these in the drawer. Okay. Um, I'm not using that today because I'm using the big cookie sheet and it doesn't fit. It's not quite enough space for me. Okay. So a cookie sheet with some parchment paper on it and then a cookie scoop. Okay. So I have a cookie scoop here in my kitchen because I do a lot of cooking. Um, if you don't have a scoop, use a spoon. Just try to make all your cookies the same size. Round them out into balls, put them on the tray, and you're going to flatten them the same way I'm going to show you today. Okay. So with our cookies, when we're scooping, right, we don't want it to be uneven like that. So I take it, scoop it in, pack it tight, scrape it on the edge of the bowl. So I get even measurements for every cookie. Okay. Now, peanut butter cookies have a traditional design to them, which I'll show you in a few minutes here. Let me just get these scooped out. Okay. And you'll get quite a few cookies. I try to spray them out at least a good inch and a half apart. If all you have is one small cookie sheet, just do two batches. Let the pan cool in between and then do the second batch. Okay. These are going to go great with chef's afternoon coffee today. Let me get through all these emails. Things, right? See, I got one, three, six, nine, so 12. And this is a good size scoop. This scoop's about the size of uh, one and a half tablespoons, just to give you a reference. Okay. 15 cookies is what I'm going to get. And don't worry, I wash my hands before I started with you guys here. I'm sanitizing my computer constantly, too, to keep the keyboard clean. Remember to wash your hands as you go. And no eating the raw cookie dough either, right? It's got raw eggs in it. So remember our serve safe stuff, right? Raw eggs, salmonella. Don't eat the cookies before they're actually cooked, okay? Um, the other thing that you're going to need, fork, right? Um, a good size dinner fork. This one's got four tines on it. And I'm going to use this to make a design on the cookies, right? So here's my cookies all scooped. I'm going to tip my computer down so you guys can see the design part, okay? You good there? All right. So with this, it, it is a crisscross kind of hash mark, right? So think of like the pound sign, right? Hashtag. Okay. That's what you're going to do on the top of the cookies. So you're going to take each cookie, press it down, but slide. Okay. So press, slide. And then you go the opposite directions, like a plus sign, right? Press and slide. Wait, so why do you like slide it instead of like pulling up? Because if you pull straight up, cookie sticks to it, right? So if you press, slide your fork, the cookie doesn't stick, okay? And they don't have to be perfect, right? Honestly, peanut butter cookies are extremely rustic cookie, right? Um, it, it's definitely one of the most common homemade cookies besides chocolate chips, right? Um, you look at any good cookie book, and it's gonna have always a peanut butter cookie recipe, right? So press down a little bit and slide, okay? And that'll give you that nice crisscross little pattern as we go, okay? Now with peanut butter cookies too, you could sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top of them if you like a little bit of extra crunch, right? You don't have to. Um, you could also roll these into balls, roll your, you know, take your scoop peas, roll it into sugar, and then press them down. Um, these ones here, I'm just gonna leave rustic this way because um, it's plenty of sugar for me, um, but I don't need any extra as it is, right? And then these are gonna go straight into a 350 degree oven right here conveniently behind me, right? And they only take about 10 minutes, okay? So keep an eye on them, right? If you have two trays in the oven when you're doing this, one on the top, one on the bottom, remember what we do at school usually, right? You take and swap them. So five minutes on the timer, take, swap your trays, right? So the tray that's on the bottom goes to the top. The tray on the top goes to the bottom. Then another five minutes. Um, if your oven tends to be a little uneven when it heats up and cooks, um, and you notice things in the back of the oven or the front of the oven cook faster, turn the tray after five minutes, right? And that'll help you make sure that your cookies um, look beautiful, okay? So I am going to stop the recording at this point, and so then we can open it up for you guys for some questions, okay?